Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to part number 8, I believe, of my bookshelf tour. So, in today's episode, we're gonna look at shelf number 8, I guess. <laughs> in the last video, I was showing you some of my Roll Doll books, and because those kind of go from one shelf onto another one, I this one's a, a kind of a shorter episode. However, don't let that put you off. Without further ado, I guess let's get started. So, first up we have Dante, The Divine Comedy. So this contains Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. I actually had Inferno as its own separate copy as well, but I'm going to get rid of that and just keep this. I mean, a lot of the stuff in here kind of goes through to popular culture and also reflects religious beliefs and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not at all religious, but I do find stuff like this interesting I guess to see representations of religious belief throughout the years. Next up we have Wolf in White Van by John Darnell. So John Darnell is the lead singer of the Mountain Goats who are one of my favourite bands. Been to see them a bunch of times and this is his first novel. It's a very odd novel. It's kind of literary fiction I guess about a guy with a facial disfigurement who runs a kind of mail order based uh, role-playing game. A bit like a choose-your-own-adventure book, except you have to send your moves in by post with a stamped address envelope, and then you receive the next, you know, the next part of the game. And that's all I'm going to tell you about this one, because if I try and explain any more about what this is about, we'll be here all day. We have Charles Darwin, The Illustrated Origin of Species. This is actually abridged and introduced by Richard E. Leakey. I didn't realise it was a bridge going into it, however, I'm, I guess I'm kind of glad that it is, because I don't think I'm ever going to read the full thing. But um, yeah, again, it's just interesting to see things like where the theory of natural selection and stuff like that originated from. And it had pretty pictures. <laughs> All right, here we have Plants by James Davies. This is just pretty much a random poetry collection from uh, a press called Reality Street. So I basically was a Reality Street supporter. So my name appears in the back pages of some of the books, including this one. This is one of the ones that I helped to fund with my subscription. And it's just kind of modern poetry really. Yeah, these are poems that substitute poems. So for example here, this is Woman Laughing Holding a Boat. Written sometime in early 2006, all 17 lines deleted in one go. Title and poem written here 30th of July 2006. That's the poem. So the actual poem itself is a history of the poem. Here we have Candy by Luke Davies. This is a novel of love and addiction. And this is actually the movie cover because it was made into a movie starring Heath Ledger. I don't think it's necessarily one that lots of people know about, but I really like drug books and drug films. So I think this is a case of I actually preferred the film to the book, but still it's a decent-ish book. And if you like books about heroin, you'll like this. Okay, then we have some Richard Dawkins. So this is God's Utility Function. So this is basically an excerpt from River Out of Eden. I don't even know where I got this from. It is literally like one or two paragraphs from River Out of Eden and yeah, it's just, it says here, it's a brilliant explanation of evolution and purpose. Then we have River Out of Eden. <laughs> so again, this is, this is the full book that this excerpt was taken from. I have to read you the blurb. I, I enjoy reading Dawkins, but it's not always easy to remember what specific books are about. So it says here, In River Out of Eden, Richard Dawkins gives perhaps his clearest exposition yet of evolution. The river is a river of DNA, flowing ceaselessly through geological deep time and, unlike a real river, branching and rebranching into the breathtakingly diverse species that cover the planet. The chapter on African Eve is especially lucid. Who puts that in a blurb? Alright, here we have Richard Dawkins, The God Delusion. If you've not heard of this book, you haven't heard of it, I guess. This is his takedown of religion. He kind of systematizes a lot of the different arguments people give and then gives his counter arguments for why there isn't a God. Personally, I happen to agree with Dawkins, but I don't care really what you believe in. You believe what you want, you know. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be militant and try and uh, persuade you to adopt my way of thinking or whatever. What I will tell you though is, when I wrote a review for that for my book review site, I tweeted it, and Richard Dawkins retweeted it to about seven hundred thousand people, I think, at the time. And uh, 
that ended up becoming my most viewed blog post ever. It was also the peak for like visits to my blog. It's never exceeded that number of visits that happened that day. But at the same time, I got so many death threats from people. And I'm like, I literally just read and reviewed a book. And they're sending me death threats because they don't like Richard Dawkins and what he has to say or whatever. It's like, well, you know, I don't send you death threats for being a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever the hell you happen to be. Here we have the view from Mount Improbable. And this is an extract from Climbing Mount Improbable. And this is an extract from Climbing Mount Improbable, which is one of the ones I haven't read yet. And basically this is all about the evolution of the eye and how that happened because a lot of, especially kind of creationists and more fundamentalist Christians and I guess people from other religions as well, they'll try and tell you that the eye is kind of proof that evolution doesn't work because you can't have half an eye or whatever. And basically Dawkins here talks about why that doesn't make any sense. That's basically an argument that comes about from a misunderstanding of how natural selection and evolution works. Here we have Unweaving the Rainbow, and the idea here, oh actually I am going to read the blurb of this because I want to get this right, because it's kind of literary in a way. So, Keats accused Newton of destroying the poetry of the rainbow by explaining the origin of its colours, thus dispelling its mystery. In this illuminating and provocative book, Richard Dawkins argues that Keats could not have been more mistaken and shows how an understanding of science inspires the human imagination and enhances our wonder of the world. And I definitely kind of subscribe to what Dawkins puts across here. He's basically saying that when science allows you to understand things, it doesn't take away its beauty. Stuff isn't just beautiful because it's mysterious. If anything, life, for me, as an atheist, but as somebody who does find science fascinating, the sheer improbability of life... And, like, the improbability of me being here, the, like, chances of m the sp specific sperm that may eat me fertilising the specific egg that made me, and not only that, but for all of my ancestors throughout all of the years. Like, I think that that, and understanding that is way more beautiful than just thinking, oh, God put me here. You know, I, I don't know, I think maths and science can be really beautiful. And the reason that stars are so beautiful is because you know they're just massive balls of burning hydrogen. Here we have Saving London, this is by Taylor Dawn, she is an indie author, we both used to be represented by a publisher called Book Trope. And a lot of people really loved this book because of its cover, because of its wing design and whatnot. I actually felt that it was a little bit like, uh, it, it felt like a rip-off of The Fault in Our Stars, really. It was like The Fault in Our Stars if that was a paranormal romance. That's what it what it was. But if that sounds like your kind of thing, go ahead and get it. I mean, support an indie author. Okay, now we have my Terry Deary books. So Terry Deary wrote the Horrible Histories books. So I'll just go through all of these. You'll be able to tell which historical period they are relevant to. So here we have the Blitzed Brits. And this is obviously about Britain during the Second World War and the Blitz and the Blitz spirit and all that kind of stuff. Here we have the Cutthroat Celts. And for those of you who aren't British and maybe don't know what the Celts are, the Celts were basically a tribe that were prevalent in kind of Western Europe. Uh, Irish and Scottish and Welsh actually and even Cornish I think in Cornwall all of those languages and like those heritages of people they're all kind of Celtic in origin from what I understand. Here we have the Rotten Romans, one of my favourite ones just because I really like the Romans. Here's actually Queen Boudicca leading the, uh, she was a Celt, she was leading the Celtic revolt, revolt even, not revolt. Here we have the Smashing Saxons, again another set of invaders who invaded the British Isles. For for you, those of you who are American and just think that the British were just this one people who like colonised the world, we were colonised loads of times before that, so <laughs> this is the terrible Tudors. And then the Vicious Vikings, which is probably my favourite of the lot. Actually, I'm missing two here. I almost forgot to mention these two as well because I'm using these for another video I'm about to film. So this is Frightful First World War and Woeful Second World War. And uh, yeah, these are going to be in a compilation review video soon because I only read these recently. So up next we have The Truth About Snails by J.D. DeHart. And this is a poetry collection, an indie poet. It's actually reviewed a few of my books. It's signed as well. It says... Uh, Dane, many thanks for sharing your work as well as your interest in mine. I mean, I'll read you one of his poems. I quite like his work. We'll just do this random one. Uh, Natural Sunlight. It finally burned out, of course, but then all physical elements eventually deconstruct, reconstruct. That is the eventual path. 
The cycle one studies. Now see the colourful pictures in a textbook. The bright azure arrows swiftly dodging one step to the next. That was how it was, they say, when the people no longer needed sunglasses. The brightest of our minds, no pun intended, study the changes carefully by candlelight, listening to the approach of the edge of night, the nocturnal creatures lapping and churning. Alright, next up we have a sci-fi classic. This is Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. I read this a couple of years ago on the recommendation of one of my friends here in High Wycombe. Shout out Amanda if you're watching. She's not. She won't. She probably doesn't even know I make these videos. But um, yeah, I thought it was alright. It wasn't as good as I was expecting, but then I had been... My ex my expectations have been set very high, let's, let's put it like that. And basically this is kind of an exploration of language and... What, what language really is. Here we have a Journal of the Plague Year by Daniel Defoe. This is actually a super old copy I have here, as you can probably tell. Let's have a look. We got a date on it. 1913 this was published. So this is 105 years old. Uh, well, this copy of it, the book itself is about five, 600 years old. And I read this for London in Literature at university and actually really enjoyed it. It's a very weird book. It's kind of a mixture between fact and fiction. Here we have Lee DeWitt, Watch Your Bias. This is the surprising science of why we vote the way we do. This is a non-fiction book and that kind of gives you all you need to know about this book really. I actually really enjoyed this. I would recommend it if this is a subject you're interested in. One of the main things I do remember from this, and I kind of remember it because I've also mentioned it in a book I've been ghostwriting for a client about healthcare, and that's that basically there was a study carried out where they asked people on the street in America whether what, how they felt about the Affordable Care Act, and then they asked the same people how they felt about Obamacare, and people who were really keen on the Affordable Care Act would then trash Obamacare. Like one of the comments, you know, they asked, you know, oh, what's wrong with it? And this person replied, well, it's in the name, isn't it? And basically you've got all these, you know, racist knob ends and all the, you know, the Republican side of things, I suppose, that just automatically retaliate against what anything that Obama did. And those were actually the same two laws and people had dra dramatically different opinions based on the name of it. So basically they would vote it in if it was called the Affordable Care Act and reject it if it was called Obamacare, even though it was the exact same thing. And again, the same bias will hold true now with Trump. If Trump proposed something that could actually fix, say, the problems with school shootings and gun violence, or if he could propose something that would fix the healthcare system, or at least improve it, he would face stiff opposition from the Democrats because he's a Republican. That bias is just inherent. And I think reading books like this are important because it helps us to overcome that bias as well. Okay, next up, we have my Colin Dexter collection. What we'll do is we'll skip ahead because after this, there's only one more book in this video. So, and that is The Runner of Little Races by Ray Diamond. And I got this signed. I actually met Ray Diamond at a spoken word night in London at the Poetry Cafe. Let me read one of his poems to you to give you a feel for his work. Child. All those teachers, those parents never knew, the wounded god that walked among them, the strange primeval worlds that coexisted with their own. How beautiful and vulnerable and sad those eyes that saw, through their own bricks and tarmac, those feet that waded through lush forests, saw giant waterfalls, exotic creatures, an endless sky. How could they care for the helpless eternal, burnt by their casual remarks, blown through the air by breath, buried below miles of solid rock by a single glance? These books are a bit dusty. <laughs> They've been on my shelves for a while since I finished reading them, but here we have anyway, this is my Colin Dexter collection. So these are all of the Inspector Morse books, including a couple of rare ones as well. So I'm just going to walk you through these in order. I can't really remember too much about the individual books now, as I've been through them quite a while ago. I will link to you below a really good video on this. I think it's from Brian's Bookshelves. But just to walk you through, we have Death Is Now My Neighbour. Then we have Last Bus to Woodstock. So this is... Ooh, hello Biggie, how are you? We have Last Seen a Wearing. Here we have Morse's Greatest Mystery and Other Stories. So this is one of the ones that's slightly rarer. I had to hunt around a bit for this online. We have Service of All the Dead. The Daughters of Cain. The Dead of Jericho. Here we have a, another really short one. This is The Inside Story, a special edition. Then we have The Jewel That Was Ours. Got the Remorseful Day. 
We have The Riddle of the Third Mile, The Secret of Annex 3, The Silent World of Nicholas Quinn, about a dead, a deaf dude, not a dead dude, well about a dead dude as well I suppose, The Way Through the Woods, and finally The Wench is Dead. So yeah, I enjoyed the Morse books. I read them maybe a couple of years ago across the space of a summer or so. And yeah, they were pretty good. They're pretty good, I would recommend them. Especially because, I guess I picked them up because I know eventually I'm going to run out of Agatha Christie. I've read out, I've ran out of Sherlock Holmes, although I do still have some Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So to me, it just seemed as though the next logical step was to move on to Morse. Especially because all these books are set in Oxford, which is... 20 30 miles away from me something like that so anyway that's about it for this video in my next bookshelf tour we have a big mix really we have a lot of random books and like quite a few worky books and non-fiction books we have one by dynamo the magician over there some jasper ford uh yeah i will i will keep you posted on that but in the meantime Please do let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.